Welcome to Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today we're here to cover Super Glue, aka Crazy Glue, all these other brand names, often referred to as CA Glue, due to its chemical composition made from cyanocrylate. I believe I'm pronouncing that almost correctly. Anyway, it was invented back in 1942 by this gentleman here, Henry Coover Jr. This guy has been around doing this kind of stuff for a long, long time. He's got over 460 patents to his name. Here he is getting the, uh, was it the National Medal of Technology and Innovation Award? He has a whole wall full of other awards and all this kind of stuff. Now, he invented it back in 42. I didn't believe it got patented until, uh, you know, years later the, the, when he was working at Eastman Kodak. The funny thing is, he was originally working for BF Goodrich. They were trying to develop uh, clear gun sights to be used in World War II. Uh, they, they, they passed on this chemical because, believe it or not, it, it was too sticky. <laughs> Well, they figured out while he was working at Kodak, they were looking for another solution for something else. And he was like, you know what, sticky? <laughs> this cyanocrylate stuff I was playing with. And they marketed it as Eastman 910, 910. Now that's a marketing coup if I ever heard one. That that kind of name. That just, it just, you know, you, you just one of those names you can't forget or anyway. Anyway, Eastman eventually sold the formula to Loctite. Now they didn't get out of the cyanocrylate business, but the formula for that got sold Loctite and they marketed that. In fact, they still market it as uh, number 404 instant adhesive. There, it does have kind of a yellowish, as they say, a straw like color to it. Um, it's clear ish, I guess, but uh, a lot of people they, there's a lot of recipes out there these days. You know, by the end of the 70s, everyone and their brother was making this stuff. Permabond came onto the scene, and between Permabond, uh, Loctite, and uh, and Kodak. They owned 75% of the market. It was it was something uh, to, to see. Anyway, here's one of the things you got to realize, though, because, you know, uh, when you're talking about this kind of stuff, a lot of people, you, you see them, they'll put it on there and they'll blow on it. Blowing on super glue, well, okay, at, at some level, it does help. It's not the air. It doesn't dry it out. This is the kind of thing that has to create a chemical bond. It, it, it uh, activates and creates a crystalline structure, if you will, a polymer structure. And uh, it, water is what activates it. So if you're blowing it, it's the moisture from your from your breath that's helping it. Now, the the good news with with CA glue or super glue is it's got excellent tensile force due to this polymer bond. Uh, it creates a that's we're pulling from one side to the other directly opposed to it. In fact, Crazy Glue had a commercial back in oh gosh when I was a little cub, where they put a drop on top of this uh, plate they had on top of a hard hat. And the guy would get suspended, you know, underneath this girder in the air with his legs kicking and stuff. And like, if he can trust it to that, you can trust it for your stuff, which is great. It And that's that, that tensile strength. Where it fails is in sheer strength. And that is going against each other. Now, in some cases, people use this to their benefit. They use it to tack something up for short term. Uh, I've seen people running a lathe, they set stuff up with it and they can then knock it off later by just whacking it on the side with a hammer. Again, that shear force is where it fails. Another great use for it is using as a as a quick bond for a longer bonding agent. Like woodworkers will put a, a wood glue or a PVA glue on a piece, but then like in a couple spots, say here and here, they'll put super glue, tack the two items together. It basically becomes a chemical clamp at that point. Now, this is the one that I use predominantly these days. I like Loctite. I think they make a great product. The reason I like this particular one right here is because of, of two things. A, it's the gel uh, gel formula. It's, it's thicker, has it's more viscous, so it doesn't run around and doesn't thin out and stuff. Do be careful, though, because uh, super glue is stronger when it's thinner than when it's thicker. So don't put too much. More is not better in this case. I also like it because these little fins you see on the side there, when you squeeze those together, that's how it disperses the fluid or the gel in this case. And when you let go, it actually pulls it back in, which helps it from drying out and last, allows it to last longer. It's great for detailed applications. Now, some of the stuff they say it's good for, ceramics, it's excellent, any kind. And I'm not talking about just Loctite. Any of these formulas are excellent at ceramics. They're excellent at bonding plastic to plastic, you know, you know, getting to play the whole daddy fix role, putting the kids' toys back together. It, you can do glass with it. It, it, it this is since I, I just throw the glass away myself, maybe buy a new one. 
but you can do it maybe for fixing like heirlooms or you know, keepsakes, stuff like that. Metal to metal or metal to plastic or other things, it's uh, that's an excellent use for it as well. Now, you, you can do metal to metal, but in this kind of situation, I, that looks like a welder job to me. I, it's not something, I don't think even JB welding there would be probably a good use for it because the stresses you're going to see at a joint like that are not, you know, not the best case for something like this. Now, one thing I note here, there you see the rust here. You can use super glue as a rust inhibitor because it will soak in, it'll pull all the moisture out of there and it will seal it against future intrusions and such. It's not a great fix, but it's a nice little temporary fix, band-aid kind of thing. Leather, leather is a great place. Although I will say smaller applications for this. If you're gonna use bigger applications or get really serious about it, I use something like Barge myself. Those all-purpose cement leather workers, this is what they use. This is what the pros use. Step up to something like this. And of course, I'm gonna have links to all this down below. If you're interested, you can look up some more and, and whatnot. Now, where's, now, where shouldn't you use it? This is where we're talking about the dirty secrets. Well, if you've ever used super glue and styrofoam, you know where I'm going. Super glue melts styrofoam. It's terrible. When I was a cub, I had one of these gliders like this, and the wings kept falling off. And I thought I was going to be super clever. So I got in, dug into the workbench, got out some super glue, and tried to super glue my wings together. Uh, no more wings. <laughs> that was the end of that toy. Uh, now, one of the myths that's out there is that it was invented to uh, as as a replacement for stitches uh, for World War II. I've heard a lot of stories along this line that a doctor invented it, that it was invented in the field, that uh, it was sent out for fixing stuff, but uh, uh, you know GIs realized, hey, we can put we can glue wounds shut and stuff like that. And actually, it wasn't until Vietnam that we actually saw uh, it being applied like that. Now. Yes, in, in my shop, I have many a time, and I'm sure you have too, you got a small nick or something, you got the super glue right there, you pinch it together, put a dab on it, wait a few seconds, and you're you're back to work. It's not the best thing for that. It works. I've done it. Don't get me wrong. It works. But, you know, there's better things out there for you. It's an irritant. And also, don't ever, like, do this and then put a Band-Aid or something on it, like put cotton gauze or something on it, because some of these organic fibers, specifically cotton for one of them, uh, yeah, they catch on fire when you put super glue on it. They burst into flames. A, a drop will here will just make it hot. A few more drops will make it smolder. Uh, a whole bunch and you get, you know, roasted marshmallows as it were. Better option, something like this, is new skin. I try to keep some new skin or some of these other things. There's also Dermabond, some other things out there. I try to keep those around for that kind of application, especially for the cubs. The, the Insta glue or the super glue can sting a bit. This is a better application for that sort of thing. Now, fabric, fabric's another thing. Will it work? Yes. Is it good for it? No. Two reasons. A, it'll soak through, it'll soak in the threads. You'll, in, you'll see that there's this big, nasty glue spot there. On top of that, these are places that flex a lot. Well, the flexing creates not just tensile force, but shear force, and it will basically crack, And because super glue dries out. The longer you have it, the drier it gets. The drier it gets, it's great for tensile. It actually gets stronger, but for sheer force, it becomes brittle and easily cracks and breaks. You're going to want a good fabric glue, such as uh, stuff like this. We keep some of that around the house for that, that just that, that case. Wood. Can you use it on wood? You can use it on certain types of wood, but again, it's not the best. You're, it's going to lock into a few of the fibers. If you glue it painted pieces, you're really just gluing the paint together. Uh, there's better applications out there. I have tight bond, you know, for in the shop and we use that for any kind of the wood type applications. Paper, you can use it on paper. And if you are, the gel is the better formula to use. But why not just use like a glue stick or something like that? This is, uh, it's way overkill. Again, it will soak into the paper. It can get messy. Elmer's glue or even the glue sticks. That's where we go with that. Now you may be tempted to get one of these bigger bottles. Like, hey, I'm going to use this a bunch. This thing's great. Why don't I get a large model and keep that around? Well, here's what happens. Unless you use this stuff every day, it's going to dry out. Moisture from the air is going to get in there. And if you get to use half that bottle before it turns into a brick, then, then, then you're luckier than I have been. You know, in fact, my wife often grabs these from the uh, from the Dollar Tree. You know, I, the, yeah, you can buy it off of Amazon for six fifty five, but you can go down to a lot of your Dollar Trees and get it for a buck. And you got one, two, three, four, five instant, well, single use. I get usually two uses out of them before they dry out. Uh, a, a little super glue tins. They're great. They're, they're fantastic for that. 
Now here's what I've the little kit that I've bought in the past because it has a it has this great thing here with it this accelerator I get off of there the accelerator here what this is is it's a chemical that when applied to super glue it bonds instantly I'm I'm not saying like if you got something where you want to adhere it and then you want to wiggle it to get it right this is not the solution for you this is when it when you when these two things touch they're done so what you do on on one side of one of the work pieces, you put the super glue, you spray the bond on the other piece. And when you put those together, they're staying together. That's it. You're done. All right. <laughs> now, the same chemical that's in that is also in baking soda. It's essentially the same thing. So you can actually use baking soda to do the same thing. However, baking soda has bulk to it. So you can actually use it to build up a piece to fill in voids, that kind of stuff. If you've got a crack with some chunks missing, use baking soda and you can Create your kind of own like little little uh, mortar in there to fill that in. Now, if let's say you got something somewhere you don't want it to be, debonder. You want to get some debonder. This stuff. This is the Bob Smith. The same people make that other little kit. They make excellent stuff. You, they always use good chemicals. There's some no name stuff. You're never quite sure what you're getting, but debonder will soften it up and let you remove it. If you really want to get it gone, acetone acetone will take it and it'll get rid of it and anything else it touches i've melted one of my radios because i spilled acetone on the workbench and didn't know about it and my radio literally melted into the work surface it was interesting to look at afterwards all right anyway there you go i hope we gave you some some infra some information that you can use some good tips and tricks where to use uh super glue where not to use super glue where it came from now now you know the full story about how it came back and that, that amazing inventor who brought this forth you know it created a multi-billion dollar industry and you know we want to say a big thanks to him fortunately he passed away about 10 years ago but anyway his legacy lives on you know, with, with super glue and crazy glue and purple bond and all that great stuff. Anyway, if you have any other questions, put them down in the comments below. If you think the bear missed a good use or good hack, put it down in the comments below. Also, I want to ask if you have another idea for a video like this that you'd like to see the history, tips and tricks, the good, the bad on, let me hear it. I want to hear all about it. By the way, while you're down there, don't forget to, you know, smack the old like button, Jump on that subscribe and ring that bell. Do the whole YouTube dance, as it were. Anyway, that's all the time I got for you today. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.